Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Woke by Accident Podcast. I am your host, Jan Washington. This is a weekly chat about socially conscious topics impacting the culture. I would like to extend my gratitude in you listening to this podcast. It means everything to me, and I hope it is clear that this subject matter is so important to me. I care about our people, our future, and making a positive change in this nation. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Woke by Accident Podcast. On this episode, I want to talk about two stories that we covered on a prior episode that have some updates that I want to discuss. And this uh, prior episode was episode 45, where we discussed Jamal Sutherland and the matter of Ronald Green. So we will get into these stories today. So we previously talked about the matter of Jamal Sutherland from South Carolina. Jamal Sutherland died after he was forcibly removed from his jail cell in a North Charleston, South Carolina facility in January. There was footage released showing the deputies pepper spraying and tasing Sutherland, who was 31, multiple times after he appeared to resist leaving his cell for a bail hearing. So they were coming to his cell to take him to a bail hearing. And this was on January 5th of 2021. And so there's footage of him being pepper sprayed and tased multiple times in this body camera footage. And you can hear him stating that he can't breathe during this encounter. And then... Sutherland died as a result of this exchange with the officers who came to take him from his cell to the hearing. So between them taking him from his cell, this interaction where they pepper sprayed and tased him, he died. As a result, the detention sergeant Lindsay Fickett and detention deputy Brian Hulu, who were involved in the incident, they were fired. Also, in May of 2021, CNN reported that the family of Jamal Sutherland would receive a $10 million settlement from the Charleston County Council in South Carolina. They unanimously approved the settlement back in May of 2021. following the death of Sutherland on January 5th at the Sheriff Al Cannon Detention Center in North Charleston. The exchange which led to his death, he got tased probably about six to eight times. And so that is excessive based on the information and I guess the normal practice and protocol of the normal practice in the facility. So the update in the matter that I want to share is that Jamal Sutherland's family are calling for criminal charges to be filed against the detention center officers who were involved with his death. Now, they were fired, the two, back when the incident occurred, but now they are calling for criminal charges to be filed they say that they are responsible for his death that is the latest update as of october 19th the body camera footage released in may by the charleston county sheriff's office showed deputy pepper spraying and using stun guns on sutherland who was 31 at the time they used the pepper spray and stun guns on him multiple times after he appeared to resist leaving his cell for the bail hearing in June, the Charleston County coroner amended Sutherland's manner of death from undetermined to homicide. So that's very telling that if they made determination of his death, a homicide, someone should be held responsible. So, um, it, it appears appropriate that the family is proceeding in this manner. Someone at the jail should be responsible for the death. 
Absolutely. Let's see. The family also has requested an investigation by the U.S. Department of Justice as well. It goes on to reference their $10 million settlement from May, and they are working with attorney Benjamin Crump, and he stated that the settlement is not enough full justice. So they are looking to get charges filed against these officers. So hopefully they um, will make some headway with pursuing this matter, and we will keep you informed on this particular case and the matter of the death of Jamal Sutherland. This next story is about the death of Ronald Green. As I mentioned, we previously covered this story on episode 45, and I want to uh, talk about a update in the matter as well as let you know what occurred on the original incident so that you are aware it's really disturbing case and a lot of people are referring to it as a modern day lynching situation and so Ronald Green the incident occurred on May 10th of 2019 actually he was an unarmed African-American man who died after being arrested by the Louisiana State Police following a high-speed chase outside of Monroe during the arrest he was punched placed in a chokehold and tased He also was dragged face down while he was handcuffed and shackled and he was left face down for at least nine minutes. At least six white state troopers were involved in the arrest. When Green's body was brought to the hospital, police told doctors that his car had run into a tree. And so that is the story that was given to his family. They told his family that he died as a result of a a traffic accident, that he had died um, running into a tree. Well, even the doctor stated that the injuries didn't add up with the car running into a tree. The The police later acknowledged that Green had died during the struggle with the officers and they didn't initially include any use of force by the officers. Later, the body camera footage was released, but the authorities refused to release the body camera footage for two years. Okay, this matter happened back in 2019. The Associated Press obtained the footage in May of 2021 and remember that Ronald Green was unarmed so he had no weapon and as soon as he crashes they immediately use a stun gun on him they use bodily force on him they put him in a chokehold they strike him they strike him in the face and then the body camera footage audio catches the struggle and the fight basically. And so there clearly was a cover up in respect to the body camera footage and the version of the story of how he died. So there's several problems in this matter. So the troopers initially told Green's family that he died by crashing into the tree. And then later they stated that he became um, responsible and died on the way to the hospital after a struggle with the troopers. But, and they didn't mention any use of force. So that part was concealed. And then another problematic part of the case is that one of the higher ranking officers on the case at the matter Lieutenant John Clary falsely told investigators that he had no body camera footage at the time of the arrest. And then that was not correct. He actually had recorded 30 minutes of footage from the arrest and turns out or come to find out 
that Clary immediately switched off his body camera. Another trooper indicated that he was recording. Clary also falsely told investigators that, that Green had that was still resisting even though he was handcuffed that he was trying to get away and not cooperating. So there were several false statements by the police. The Green family filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the state police in May of 2020. And this is still pending as of July, 2020. So this matter is not resolved. And the images of Green's injuries are out here on the internet to be viewed. Initially, the Louisiana State Police said the use of the force the troopers used was justified, and they now have a, an opened a administrative investigation. And there also is a federal civil rights investigation into the death of Ronald Green. So it looks like one of the officers... DeMoss was arrested in February of 2021 for excessive force. Well, okay. So on July 7th of 2021, the FBI ordered a re-examination of Green's autopsy, taking into account the body camera footage, which had not been available during the first autopsy. And then the update in the matter is that another Louisiana state trooper who believed that the officers had received a slap on the wrist. Like we said, there were six officers involved and barely endured any consequences. Well, and this African-American officer who gave some interviews discussing the matter well, he has been fired after leaking documents exposing the alleged cover-up. Carl Cavalier, a state trooper with the Louisiana State Police Department, reportedly has been fired in the wake of his leak of internal records regarding the 2019 death of Ronald Green. And, this, and so Cavalier, working in this department, understands and realizes what we know to be a cover-up concerning the death of Ronald Green. And I mean, a clear cover-up and this, you know, clearly helped the, the officers involved avoid any charges because they didn't endure any charges. And so he, so, so Cavalier, who was 33 years old, was ultimately suspended and placed on a five-week paid leave for leaking internal state police files related to the investigation during his appearance in multiple interviews. It doesn't say what he released, but apparently he gave out information during interviews discussing the case. And that goes on to say this information is from Yahoo News that Trooper Cavalier received the decision of the appointing authority to move forward with termination based on an administrative investigation that he violated several departmental policies. And it looks like he also has filed a suit against the Department for Harassment and Discrimination for an independent manner. So that's interesting that this um, separate matter with Trooper Cavalier has to do with the Ronald Green case. But perhaps this can create a scenario where something can be done where these officers can be held accountable because they totally had no accountability in their actions. So yeah, this one was a really rough one because their actions were really, really clear, especially with the video, the body camera footage. It, you know, it took a long time for that body camera footage to come out, but once it came out, it should have been clear hey, child charges need to be filed. And so, I mean, that still can happen in my opinion. So, um, you know, the family still has their case open. So hopefully, you know, something can be done and we will keep you guys informed. At this time,
time, we are going to go ahead and conclude this episode. We do appreciate you listening. We do invite you to follow us on social media. On Instagram, it is Woke by Accident Podcast. On Twitter, it is Woke by. The Gmail is Woke by Accident at gmail.com. And we are available on all of your favorite streaming platforms. Please go out and follow us, share, leave a review, tell a friend. And every time you listen, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you again and take care.